smile to Jenya. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are aware of the atrocious attack that took place in Manchester. And this was not just an attack on children, this was an attack on our children. We take any attack very seriously, whether it's in this country, whether it's in any other country. Now, sadly, this has become a trend now. Anytime something happens, you have the right wingers, like our friend Tommy Robinson, who takes to the scene and adds more fuel to the fire. I'm sure he has good intentions of trying to solve this, but rather he ends up doing the exact opposite. This time we're going to watch what Tommy Robinson was saying and we're going to analyze it using logical fallacies. Now what are logical fallacies? Logical fallacies, to put it bluntly, are errors in reason which render a person's argument illogical. Let's begin. So I've come to Manchester after the terrorist attack last night and I've started to scratch beneath the surface to find out what problems there are in this city. And I've ended up here, outside this mosque. A history of extremism with this mosque. Now where I'm standing now, within a stone's throw, a two mile radius of where I'm standing now, there's been 16 men who have died or been in prison for fighting for ISIS. 16, just in Okay, now, I don't know how true this is. I looked everywhere, I couldn't find this. So maybe if Tommy could give us the source, we can actually uh, check. Two mile radius of this part of the city, not the whole city, just this city. At one city across the, across the UK. This is the first logical fallacy Tommy has done. This is called appeal to fair. Yeah. Now here Tommy is saying, look, I found 16 just in this city. What about all the other cities? Question mark, question mark. When fair, not based on evidence or reason, is being used as the primary motivator to get others to accept an idea, proposition or conclusion. That's the first fallacy, mate. And the second fallacy is hasty generalization. That is drawing a conclusion based on a small sample size rather than looking at statistics that are much more in line with the typical or average situation. When you start going into the history and the problems embedded in this area, we've seen a terrorist in 2003 called Burgos. Burgos stabbed a police officer, murdered a police officer in a counter-terrorism raid. I was in jail with him yeah, in 2012. He's in control of the prison. He's the main man. So all the people think there's a solution to send these men into prison, into normal prisons with car thieves or house burglars. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that, Tommy. The prison's actually called HMP Franklin, and it's a male high-risk facility. And in fact, they're actually in talks of making a special wing for extremists. Of course, Tommy Robinson thinks that these terrorists should be separated, so he'll be happy to hear about this. Let's have a look at what Steve Gillen, POA, says, which is the Prison Officers Association. He says, Jihadi blocks could create Britain's own version of Guantanamo Bay, which could give extremists an elevated status. He goes on to say, we saw it in Northern Ireland where some loyalist prisoners and some Republican prisoners were segregated and what happened was that it gave them a political status. It didn't work and in fact made the situation worse. They're running the joint. They're in there living a complete halal life, recruiting and radicalizing more and more people. <laughs> a halal life. Tommy, my man. Halal means something which is permissible. The fact that he's in prison shows he's not really living a permissible lifestyle. Solving our problem. We've seen Andy Burnham, who's the MP for this area. Andy Burnham is on record sitting with an extremist organization called MENT. First of all, who said the extremist? Now also, Tommy, what you maybe didn't know was they also condemned this attack as well. Now, what sort of extremist organization is it that is going around condemning terrorist attacks? That takes us on to our next fallacy, which is anonymous authority. He does this a lot and this is when a anonymous source is used without any quotation or reference given. This organisation believes that Al-Qaeda are a myth. This is the MP, this is the, the, the Mayor of Greater Manchester who's all... Okay, so he's taken a quote where they've said that Al-Qaeda is a myth, yeah? Now, I don't know if they said that or not, but even the BBC has put out a programme where they challenge this narrative. Now the logical fallacy that we see here is tokenism, which is interpreting a token gesture as an adequate substitute for the real thing. 
organising a peace vigil today works and cooperates with Islamic radicals. How can he be claiming he's going to solve the problem? Okay, again, anonymous authority has been used again. Which Islamic radicals is he working with? Can you tell us please, Tommy, so we can actually check it ourselves? Justice Secretary for the Labour Party took £5,000. £5,000 of an Islamic radical group. Again, which radical group? They are in bed with them. Our politicians have sold us out. They're working hand in hand with radical extremists. And that, and what you saw last night is the end, the end outcome of that. Years and years and years of radicalization extremism that our politicians have allowed to happen, that continues to happen. And the outco outcome now is our children are being killed. They're being killed. If they're not being raped and destroyed in Rochdale Rotherham, they're being butchered and, and maimed in city centers, outside concert halls. That's the future for our generations. It's about time people woke up. When we, when we hear all the time the politicians say we're all in it together we're all in it together six mm, okay he was doing well he gave some good facts all right this issue is going on what are the politicians doing and now you got jeremy corbyn who's looking to revise our foreign policy which hopefully should help because that is the reason that terrorists give 66 percent of british muslims said they would not report on another muslim joining isis now what's ironic here is that the attacker of Manchester was actually reported to the MI5 or the authorities long before the attack took place. Why is that? Because the Quran says that if they side with a the non-Muslim they will end up in hell. Where on earth does it say that mate? Yeah, the logical fallacy of contextomy is used here, which is fancy word of just taking things out of context. Anonymous authority not giving a reference. You're seeing a trend now. It comes back to the ideology again. It comes back to the ideology. You have over 100,000 British Muslims who have said that suicide bombing is justified. The actions you saw last night, we have 100,000 people who think it's justified. Where? That's 100,000 people who need to leave our country. That's 100,000 people enemies. When you see these communities and you see these houses, you think this is a British community or you might have British Muslims. They are, they are enemy combatants in these houses. Okay, now that's very dangerous. Yeah, he's standing outside the mosque and he himself has said and he's giving percentages but the way he's just talking is he's saying generally the people in these streets yeah, which is ironic because someone from these streets will actually come up to him but we'll get to that bit in these houses are enemy combatants who want to kill you maim you and destroy you they want to destroy our way of life let me pause the fear-mongering for one sec and let's hear from some academics Ari Kruglansky a professor of psychology of the University of Maryland who studies radicalization said a growing climate of Islamophobia is what ISIS is aiming for to provoke communities to commit actions against Muslims he told the Washington Post then ISIS will be able to say I told you so these are your enemies and the enemies of Islam another psychology professor who studies extremists Jocelyn Belanga of the University of Quebec in Montreal agrees when people feel a loss of significance when they are humiliated that propels them to join a radical group and that's it and that is and not at any point again I'm standing next to a Muslim now who just stood and said how outraged he is by this same situation how disgusted he is so people are but that is the, the problem is Islamic ideology is Islamic scripture whoa 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 he's just got five logical fallacies the first is causal reductionism which is assuming a single cause or reason when there were actually multiple causes or reasons okay the other one is questionable cause which is concluding that one thing caused another simply because they are regularly associated the other one is reductio ad absurdum which is a mode of argumentation or a form of argument in which proposition is disproved by following its implications logically to an absurd conclusion. Scapegoating. Un unfairly blaming an unpopular person or group of people for a problem or a person or group that is easy to target for such blame. Jumping to conclusions. That's a logical fallacy but I'm sure I don't, I don't need to explain that. I said today, I've listened to journalist after journalist after journalist. Not one of them has mentioned the word Islam. Not one of them. Okay, now why would they mention Islam? Because you have a problem with Islam? Again, logical fallacy. 
This is called willed ignorance. Refusing to change one's mind or consider conflicting information based on a desire to maintain one's existing beliefs. The justification and the, the reason that why this attack has happened, not one of them will even mention why it's happened. Not one of them said it, not one. The N-word, not I-word. That's it. That's because Tommy, my friend, people understand that you can't judge a majority based on the actions of a minority. You said it yourself when people quizzed you about the EDL and the extremists. So the first fallacy is the fallacy of division, which is, again, like I said, blaming everyone for the actions of a few. The far-fetched hypothesis, which I'm sure I don't need to explain. They say it. And that's why we've come up here. I've come up here. People chill. People lost their children. Okay? I haven't come up here. People say, oh, you enjoy it. You're there to push your agenda. My agenda is to stop what happened last night. My agenda is to stop the hate. I'm not enjoy this. People say, oh, you're getting, you're getting your benefit out of it. What benefit do I get out of this? Uh, book sales, sponsors, YouTube views. You get interviews. You get people donating to you. You get offered jobs. I mean, your last job was with Quilliam, where you were given, well, you said yourself, you were paid two grand a month. The terrorists who killed them people last night, they want to kill me. They want to kill my family. They want to kill my, my wife. A logical fallacy. This is appeal to pity, which again, I'm sure I don't need to explain, explain, but just because Tommy is saying that he's receiving threats like that, um, doesn't necessarily mean his argument is true. I mean, I have also received death threats when I've made videos um, advising Tommy as well. With that, I don't enjoy it. I don't get anything out of it. But the reality is, if we want to stop what happened last night and we want to really get to grips with it, we've got to start identifying why it's happening. And it's happening because the Quran in over a hundred verses incites murder and war against us. That of course, appeal to authority. No reference has been given. Um, we're not going to know which verses he's referring to. The logical fallacy, of course, is the straw man, which is substituting a person's actual position or argument with a distorted, exaggerated or misinterpreted version of the position of the argument. And of course, false effect, which is unlike the false cause, the false effect incorrectly assumes an effect from a cause. That's the truth. These are facts. Facts are not hate speech. Mm. But Hitler, he was born a Christian. Can I say the same about Hitler after he killed six million Jews? Hey, it's a fact. I can say Christians have killed six million Jews and I wouldn't be wrong. You may not like the facts. Liberals may not like the facts. You want to blame Tommy Robinson. You want to okay, why is he talking about himself? The third person. Take it out on us. Like it's, like it's my fault. Like I wrote the Quran. Like I incited all these Muslims to join ISIS. Actually, mate, it is people like you pushing people to the other extreme. So you are kind of doing that. Now that moves me on to the next logical fallacy, which is called shoehorning. Let's have a look. The process of force fitting some current affair into one's personal, political or religious agenda. This whole video has been a really good example of shoehorning. We need to wake up to the threat we face. What's happened in Manchester is going to happen again across our country because our politicians are willful, saying we're all holding hands and community cohesion and diversity. No, it's not. It's not working. It will not work. Okay, as we're ending, Tommy gives us two more logical fallacies. Of course, appeal to fear. And finally, the slippery slope, which is used a lot. Yeah. So in other words, he takes a few issues and then just jumps the gun. Yeah. We've reached the end of the video and as always with Tommy Robinson's rants, there's no solution. It's just more needs to be done and just jam-packed negative sentiment. Please don't listen to people like Tommy Robinson. The solution is always peace, it's always harmony and understanding and education. Until next time guys, Assalamu Alaikum.